guys, welcome back to Roads Untraveled. Here we go, this is not something I would normally have any interest in driving, uh, but nonetheless today I find myself behind the wheel of the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. This is an all new, what Hyundai calls a sport adventure vehicle. Okay, so this is an entirely new segment that's kind of split between crossover and small SUV market and the truck market. We can basically directly compare this to the Honda Ridgeline uh, and the Ford Maverick and a couple of other vehicles. But let's go for a drive. Let's see what it's all about. It looks kind of weird. It looks, it's a little bit different. Striking on the road this last week, I've got a bunch of different looks from people on the car. Some people love it. See, I called it a car, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, and then somebody else earlier this week called it a truck and I had to correct them. I'm like, Hyundai would be flattered that you just called this uh, a truck. <laughs> We're up here in Canada, so it is a little bit different. There are two engine options if you're in the United States. For the Santa Cruz, you can either get a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four, making less than 200 horsepower, or you can spec it with a turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, which is what is standard up here in Canada. It makes 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. So we're gonna go into sport mode here. While this isn't a light vehicle, uh, it's about, it's just over 4,100 pounds here. Uh, it's also compared to like the Honda Ridgeline, it's not nearly as heavy. The Honda Ridgeline uh, is about 4,600 pounds and this is about 500 pounds lighter. This is a lot smaller though, so we do have to take that into consideration. Zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds. See how it gets off the line here, no launch control. It's not that kind of sport adventure vehicle. <laughs> Let's go. A little bit of a delay, spool up, shifts early at 6,000 before the 6,500 RPM red line. And there we are, that's like 80 miles an hour. <laughs> but zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds, does the quarter mile uh, at 94 mile an hour trap speed. So not incredibly quick. Okay, so we've got uh, three different drive modes and three different terrain modes. Now the drive modes with the electronic assisted power steering do change up the steering a little bit in sport. Uh, it's definitely a little more stiff. Still a little bit numb. We're gonna jump into the corners here uh, and see what's going on. But then we have three different terrain modes, uh, which are snow, mud, and sand. So those basically send torque where the torque is needed to be sent. Now here in Canada, as I mentioned, all of the Santa Cruz models come standard with all wheel drive and the turbocharged engine. There is an electronically controlled clutch with a center diff sending up to, up to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. There's nothing worse than a vehicle that says it does one thing, but then actually, or says it's for one thing, but then actually does the opposite or something else like even better than that which is the Santa Cruz is like totally just right up front with exactly what it is. It looks like something that would be in, I mean, not super futuristic looking, but it does have that kind of edgy look to it. It's absolutely a polarizing looking vehicle. I've had people come up to me and say, this is this is so ugly. <laughs> the, the disgusting emojis that were sent to me on Instagram uh, this week over the look of this car were something I was not totally expecting. Now, I know it is different. Nice lift off turn in there. Easy to cut that understeer out, which is nice. Uh, you know, it's a very polarizing vehicle. I actually kind of like the way it looks from certain angles. Uh, the rear end, I, I really like the kind of embossed, like embedded Santa Cruz uh, into the bed of the truck. Uh, gives it that kind of uh, lifestyle feel that, hey, Guys, I, I go snowshoeing, I go hiking, I go horseback riding. <laughs> I do things. That's what the Hyundai Santa Cruz says. I do things. It's the opposite of what the S-Class that I recently drove says. That says, I don't do anything. <laughs> I'm on a screen all day or in meetings all day. While yes, as I mentioned, in mud, sand, and snow modes, it will decide where the traction needs to be sent, where the torque needs to be sent right to left, 
But in fact, that is done, and this might not be an important point to most people, uh, but in a modern age, it is, I feel like, most of that torque vectoring is done via, via the brakes. So it is, it's not actual real torque vectoring. <laughs> it's brake vectoring. Uh, but in any case, the end result is very similar. It knows where to send the torque to each side and uh, it will send the torque adequately to that wheel. So here in the center here, we do have a 10.25 inch LED screen. Really good screen. Uh, it is a factory eight inch screen. If you go with the standard model, uh, I would highly recommend this 10.25. It's a great size. Uh, and I kind of like that it's positioned a little bit lower in the dash because this is a vehicle that you would have a tendency of spending more time with loose surfaces underneath you. Uh, and thus you're probably going to be spending more time actually focusing on the road ahead of you. So having a screen up higher, if it was there, would have a tendency, at least for me, to distract me from the actual terrain that I want to be engaging with and having fun with uh, as I'm hopefully pushing my Santa Cruz a little bit closer to its limits. Interior here is good. We've got the dark green leather, the two-tone dark green, uh, and then we've got some nice red stitching on these seats here. Awesome interior. I love this cloth uh, accent kind of deal here they've got going on on the dash and then there's this weird kind of painted on or vinyl pattern on the right. There's like an X with black and orange. Looks strange. I don't know what it's doing there, but it's there and my eyes were drawn to it. <laughs> uh, and then of course you've got all your HVAC vents up here, plenty of them. Uh, and then in the rear, the HVAC vents are optional or they come on the higher tier models. We've got heated steering wheel. Probably the hottest heated steering wheel I felt almost honestly at one point encouraged me to take my hands off the wheel, which wasn't, was not a good side effect. The best part, the best part about the Santa Cruz, you guys, is it drives like a car. It drives like a lifted car or an SUV. It really does. You can mob this thing in the corners. It's flat. The, the tail end doesn't wag around on entry or exit. As you guys saw earlier, coming to a corner a little bit too hot lift off throttle the rear end rotates really nicely around uh, and then you could power out the dual clutch is good you can control it with these paddle shifters uh really awesome really awesome to see hyundai with a dual clutch i mean if you had told me a couple of years ago that hyundai was going to have a dual clutch in their uh like truck effectively I might not have believed you just because the dual clutch uh, just a few years ago was kind of reserved for the upper the upper echelon of sports cars and of supercars and cars that didn't have huge tor huge torque figures and while the Santa Cruz doesn't have an insanely big torque number uh, the dual clutch works great here the one thing I did notice a couple things uh, off the line right off the line just that very first rolling start that you get there's a little bit of like a shake and then it feels like then the dual clutch engages and then we start we're actually like the throttle is fully connected to the vehicle it's really hard to describe uh but this is something that's been happening off every single stoplight since i got the car a week ago it's not a game ender i just thought i'd mention it I mean, yeah, the, the engine doesn't sound good. That's not what you're buying the Santa Cruz for. You're not buying it for its high revs. Do buy it for its mid-range torque, though. Okay, we're gonna find a little spot up here. We'll put it in mud mode. We'll hit a little bit of this dirt up here. Just to say we did. Oh yeah, there's some water, there's some puddle action. Oh no, okay, now it's getting actually kind of deep there. <laughs> Pretty good approach and departure angles too. 
I think we actually got some water a little bit high in the grill there because I saw a bunch of steam come out for a moment. When I got in the car, the seat was set really high. So I'm assuming that somebody a little bit shorter than me was sitting in here before. Uh, and then I went to go lower the seat and then it just stopped. I was like, I want, I want you to go lower. I want to sit lower. <laughs> so I, I, this is a fair warning. I believe this is an incredibly fair warning. You may want to sit in the Santa Cruz before you go ahead and buy one uh, or at least go, go, I mean, this goes for any vehicle, but go test drive it because I am, I would have liked the seat to go a little bit lower than it in fact does go. What I think we're going to see going forward is we're already seeing a hybrid version of the Maverick is these have a very high potential in my mind of becoming some of the first mass produced low cost EV trucks trucks on the market. I really do. I think that that's basically a no brainer here. I think these four cylinder uh, engines that are in the Maverick and in here in the Santa Cruz are going to be phased out in the next few years. And I think these are just going to become the entry level EV trucks. I, I think it's cool that Hyundai's making vehicles like the Santa Cruz, okay? Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got a bunch more exciting cars, more exciting cars, I will admit, uh, coming to the channel very soon. So I hope you guys are able to stick around for that. You can hit me up on Instagram at Roads Untraveled uh, if you wanna see what I'm driving and what's coming up. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.